The CEO of Stellantis has just come out firing at Tesla today. He has said that Tesla is just in a race to the bottom. They're hurting the EV industry. They are simply annihilating their own profits at their own detriment. And they're saying at the same time that their EV platform, their new EV platform will be superior to Tesla. It'll have apparently 500 miles of range. Now, that's kind of an interesting piece of news considering only a few days ago, we found the first electric car, it was the first electric car from Ram, basically Stellantis is the parent company, was revealed in America. Unfortunately, it clearly does not have this new platform that has 500 miles of range because it has 162 miles of range. But hey, at least it has lots of space and at least finally Stellantis are selling an electric car, even though only one in the United States. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. The first electric vehicle from Ram and from Stellantis really will be offered in delivery and cargo van configurations. Actually, it could be, a, I think, a really big hit, but I'm not really convinced that many pr prospective owners will want to buy a vehicle that costs this much money with only 162 miles of range. So that's my first concern here. When I first saw the headlines, I thought, whoa, this is a new van. That range figure just doesn't sound that good to me. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Do you agree, disagree? Ram has begun electrifying their lineup with the all new ProMaster EV. It's an electric van that will take on the Ford E Transit. The Ford E Transit has about 80% market share right now in electric vans in North America. Set to beat the Ram 1500 Rev, which is a plug-in hybrid to market, the ProMaster EV is identical to its gasoline powered counterpart because unfortunately, it is actually an internal combustion engine platform that's been kind of adapted for an EV. Both variants of the Ram van are based on the Fiat Ducato sold overseas, which is also internal combustion as well. The EV features a driver's side charging port as well as standard LED lighting units. The van will be coming in two mission specific configurations. The delivery variant is available for order and it features a pocket door as well as an anodized aluminum roll up rear door. It includes an extended super high roof, which is 159 inches high, and it has a about a four meter wheelbase. That's a pretty long wheelbase, a payload capacity of 2,030 pounds. That's 921 kilograms. Now, apparently there's a whole lot of driver assistance systems, including automatic high beam, full speed forward collision warning, crosswind assist, post collision braking and other features. They're joined by traffic sign information, drowsiness detection, and a review camera with dynamic grid lines. So what powers this? Why, why is the range relatively short? Well, here's the thing. It's not, it's not a small battery, it's quite big. It's a 110 kilowatt hour battery pack that powers this vehicle with a front motor developing 268 horsepower. So 200 kilowatt and about 302 pound feet of torque. That's 410 newton meters. I think it's got plenty of power for a vehicle this size, but considering the size of the battery pack, that's a pretty big battery, 110 kilowatt hour size battery. It does seem surprising that the range is so low. I get that it's a van and it's higher, but ultimately, I still think it should be getting more than 160 miles of range from a battery that big. And you can really see that the compromise here of using an internal combustion engine vehicle, just turning that into an EV, is clearly affecting the range. That said, the Ford E-Transit doesn't have that much range either. It only has 126 miles of range, providing 203 kilometers in the metric numbers. I honestly think if Ford and Ram had brought out some really compelling electric vans that had good range, they'd sell incredibly well. But at this point in time, electric vans are just not a big thing in the United States. They're huge in China though, where you can get all kinds of different vans at really affordable prices. Ram haven't said anything about recharging, but the van apparently has level two charging of 11 kilowatt AC. The company has said that DC charging is 50 kilowatt, depending on the variant, up to 85 on another variant, 125 on another variant, and 150 kilowatt on the most expensive version. So the fastest charge you can get with this vehicle is 150 kilowatt charging speed. And now imagine you bought this not knowing that much about electric cars. You thought, well, I'll get the cheaper option. That's all I can afford. Has 50 kilowatt charging. You're trying to use 50 kilowatt charging to charge a 110 kilowatt hour battery. That would take hours. That literally would take hours. 
I think that's a bad idea from from um, Ramps, Atlantis. I don't think they've thought this through because there will be lots of customers that won't really understand that 50 kilowatt fast charging is going to cause them problems. If they're out and about, they're doing a road trip, they're going to go, going to go on a longer trip, um, that will be a big impediment. It's going to make them say to their friends, I bought this electric van, it seems really good, but I went to charge the thing and it took forever. So I just, I think if you're going to bring out an EV, don't bring it out with a massive, a big battery pack, 111 kilowatt battery pack with really slow 50 kilowatt charging. I think that's not a good idea. But hey, maybe I'm just being negative because I'm sort of sick of Stellantis and they're whining and complaining and bashing Tesla. And, you know, the CEO seems to be a bit of a nut job, I think, a bit bipolar. But what I should be doing is doing this. Hey, this is an electric van in the US. There's not many available. At least there is another option. Details. The company says it has best-in-class cargo capacity of 524 cubic feet, which is 14,838 liters, as well as best-in-class interior cargo height of 86 inches, which is about 2.2 meters. So at least there is another option. Just a pity to know that it could have been so much better. Thanks for watching.